for those who would like, uh, who are interested in going or would like to go, I know it's, it's happening. Um, this coming week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, just for your information purposes, is the Washington Parish Fair uh, in Franklinton, Louisiana. Uh, I know some of you will go to it, so if you want, uh, that's happening this week. Uh, so it's only Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and all on Sunday. Um, it, ends, it ends this coming Saturday, so keep that in mind uh, in Franklinton. Uh, and then I think also, I think on that same, that same weekend, I think this coming weekend, is the St. Margaret Perry Fair. I think that's happening also. Uh, this coming weekend is, uh, what is it, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They have it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so that's on Robert. So uh, they'll have their fair there. And I, and I think soon, um, is the, uh, the street fair as well. I could be wrong as far as I, but usually they have that sometime in October as well. Uh, I think it's the, probably the last weekend uh, in October, uh, but don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And I'm usually, it's, it's usually around this way as well. Uh, they have the street fair in Old Town on Saturday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. I think it's the last Saturday and Sunday of this month, but I have to recheck that. So keep in mind, there are quite a few things that's going on and taking place in our area concerning the different things that are taking place. Uh, calendars, uh, we still have about 16 of them left as of uh, this morning before anybody got any. So there's 16 calendars left if you would like to purchase them. They're over there as well. Uh, and then we did have a grand total for what I told you last week of uh, Georgia Barnett, the grand total was $237 that we did collect for Georgia Barnett. So that, that was the grand total of all that. Any other announcements we need to be aware of, of things going on, taking place, or happening? Anything or anyone else? If not, staff, come to me. <laughs> One hundred. One hundred. Annual wear. Heard on high. She's trying to get a good my wife. <laughs>
parents, I'd ask you to remember each and every one of the prayers we have written down. I just got a voicemail, voice text this morning on my cell phone um, uh, telling me Miss Virginia Hall is at Sonner Memorial in ICU. Um, it seems as though she's had some problems. She has some problems right now with her heart, congestive heart failure, which means there's fluid around the heart. Uh, so they put her on oxygen. I just think they probably distress just from everything that has been taking place over the past month uh, that has happened and everything. We had a memorial service yesterday uh, in memory of Terry and Claude uh, Priest. And uh, so I don't know if there's just been too much, but she's been having uh, health issues. So she's at Spider Memorial, as far as I know from the voicemail from her daughter Linda. She is in ICU. And I'm thinking she's probably at Spider Memorial Hospital. That's where she usually does go, uh, as far as all that. Uh, she is on oxygen. Uh, I think she is doing somewhat better uh, as far as with everything. But just keep her in prayer. Uh, so if you want to go by and see her today or call up there and see what's going on. I'll be going up there a little later on um, after a while and see how she's doing. But just to let you know, uh, she is in Slotter Memorial Hospital, uh, ICU, or uh, I don't know if it's SI or Wood Way I don't know if it's in the second floor uh, where they put them all uh, at or whatever. Uh, you have to, I'll have to find out. You have to find out so we you go there. So just remember her as well as the family in prayer. Uh, she does have a lot of relatives in uh, from the memorial service uh, yesterday, so she's had a lot. She's had a lot of people who have come in from out of town, from Texas and other places as well. Uh, so try to mercy for them and remember her family as well as the others. Uh, remember not only her but our uh, other brother Felix as well, with the passing of both Claude and nephew Terry. Uh, as well, so do remember that family in prayer and of course what they are uh, dealing with. So do remember them in prayer. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Renee. This is my favorite family. Okay, how's mom? She's about the same. About the same, okay. So remember your sisters as well as your family and your mom and no in Tennessee. So yes, remember them. Also, Remember Debbie Garrett's family also, Debbie's mom and Debbie's sister, and other family members as well. Uh, all of them have health issues or dealing with different things in their life. So do pray for uh, Debbie Garrett's family in Kentucky. Other prayer requests, other concerns. Ms. Nell. Please remember my sister. Okay. Uh-huh. She wasn't in the hospital, but she was going back next to me. Okay. She has kidney stones. She's got one large one and a small one. Ooh. Doesn't yeah. matter what it's going to be small, it's still uh, painful. Yes. She can't pass it for the big one. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I'll put you some ground to be fine. But she just, I don't know what they're going to do in the next to me. Okay. Well, we'll keep her in prayer. Keep y'all too in prayer. Thank you. Yes. On the prayer request. Okay. Uh, I know the person for one is going to be deployed this kind of way. Okay. And we don't know where he's going. Right. Okay. Well, just remember him as well as all the men and women in the military as he will be deployed and no tell him where. And, and it's always a very difficult and hard thing for the family. So, yes. Billy Lynch, brother Harvey, continue to remember him in prayer. 
Uh, he may or may not be having trouble with his kidney, so we're going to have to find out about that. And then his sister-in-law, Barbara, she too is having some health issues, also a leg and also a back. So remember your sister-in-law in prayer and what's, what's going on as far as we talk. Uh, I also understand, um, Francis, you're going to be doing a little traveling. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, we got to these things, huh? <laughs> Travel mercies for you as you travel. Yes, and my sister. Yeah. Her sister. Yes, yes. Remember her. Remember you and Greg. As you travel, and we'll remember her also. Others. Pray for the many different ones, again, that are going through difficulties, whatever may be going on. Things at work, at home, uh, and even the battle we have within ourselves. Uh, again, not only for Miss Francis, but travel mercies for all who travel and are traveling. Uh, back and forth to work, or just even around the city. Just pray for traveling mercies for the different ones. And as always, pray for the lost, those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord. <coughs> Whomever they may be, uh, pray for them. And all of the unspoken prayers as well. I know we all lift up things to the Lord in private. Uh, that's between you and the Lord, and that's fine. Lift it up and pray for all of the unspoken prayers as for what all goes on within different matters that you have, uh, so give it to the Lord. Again, you be in prayer for the many ones on our prayer list. Again, as was mentioned, pray for all the men and women in the military. Pray for Christian missionaries throughout the world. Proclaim the gospel. As always, pray for our country. Pray for what is going on in our country, our own country, and the many things that are taking place, especially now, where many are calling evil good. What is good, they call evil. So pray for our nation, and for what the many people are, and how the many, many, many people are getting away from the Word of God and what the Word of God has to say. <coughs> this is a sad thing, but this is what's taking place in our land today. And we need to pray for the many things that are going on in our land that affects us because of how we may feel about it. Pray for different things that are going on and different things that are taking place in our land. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come before you. Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for being with us, for helping us. Thanks for giving unto us things needed in our life and just for comforting us and helping us, even when we don't understand the things that are going on either in our life or the things in, in, in our land. We do lift up the many, many, many different ones, the many different people that are dealing with different health issues and health problems in their lives today. Miss Virginia Hall, where she's in the hospital, we lift her up before you. Other Lord, that are experiencing and having physical problems in their lives. Some are not here, but yet some, many are sitting here. And we lift them all up before you. And we pray for your help, for your healing power, for your grace, and for your mercy. We pray, Father, for the struggles that we all go through, the many things, the many difficulties that we encounter, that we are experiencing in our lives. Many, many different things, Lord. We pray for your help. We pray for the lost, for many who do not know Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. We pray for them, Lord. We lift them up before you, and we pray for salvation. Lord God, we pray for your help in the lives of each and every one. Travel mercies for the many and all who will be traveling. Watch over them, be with them, and help them. We pray for what is going on in our land. Many things that are happening. <coughs> God, help them, Lord, and be with them. The men and women in the military. Some is being mentioned and deployed, or going to be deployed in different areas. No, not where. And we lift up all of the men and women in the military. Pray for your help in your life. Christian missionaries throughout the world, be with them and help them. Again, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for helping us and for being with us. We just ask for your very presence today. Lead us and guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, for any today that are not truly born again, I pray that your Spirit will move my way. And that you will work on the hearts and the lives today. And today, they will come to know you as Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Let us stand. <coughs> now from the leaders in an auditory hymn. Number 59, my Lord, is near me all the time.
who was possessed by this, he was buried in Mark chapter 5, looking at the mighty work of our Lord and what he has done in the life of an individual. You know, Jesus and his disciples, they were on one side of the, of the lake, and so now he landed on the other side. Uh, they got into a boat, and they got into the water, and there was a storm that came up. He already recited, he already calmed down the storm, and as they got to the other side, they, and they got out of the boat, there was a man who was a demon possessed and came out to meet Jesus. You know, today we don't encounter demons per se. Now we think of people sometimes as demons, some people that we may encounter and think that there's something wrong with them or maybe demon possessed, but you truly know a person who is or who is not. Uh, but understand that you know demons are, are very real and they do possess human bodies even today. This is not something that took, that took place only in the days of Jesus. Uh, this has been going on all the way now through the centuries. Uh, the question of course is always, what is a demon? A demon is an evil spirit. Uh, it's an unclean spirit. It's not a ghost, as we want to think of ghost, as some have maybe thought of as ghost. Um, who are they? They're fallen angels. They're angels that rebel against God. These are the demons. This is, what we, this is what's going on here. And this is what we're talking about. This, and even today in the land, People may not even believe it, but yeah, these fallen angels are indeed demons. Uh, a long, long time ago, after God had created everything that was created, and on a day, on a sixth day, he called everything good, and everything was good. And God rested and said on the seventh day. Well, somewhere between after the seventh day when God rested, and the time when Adam and Eve was tempted by Satan, there was a rebellion that took place in heaven. Satan and a quarter of the angels rebelled. And they were cast out of heaven, thrown to earth. And these ones that were rebelled and cast out, these were what we call the demons, the evil spirits that roamed the earth, that plagued the earth. And so Satan and a host of other angels that rebelled, they became the unclean spirits, the evil spirits that dwell even today upon the face of the earth. Now, these spirits, these evil spirits, of course, they are like unto Satan. And they came and they possessed human bodies because they themselves have no bodies. They are a evil spirit, as I said. And what happens is they come into that person and they take complete control of the person. Uh, Mary, as it was said that Mary of Magdalene was possessed by seven demons, and Jesus healed her or exercised the demons out of her body. Now, also understand, according to the Word of God, that no truly born again believer can be possessed by a demon. And I said truly born again. I'm going to say those who claim to have no order, but truly born again but cannot be caused greater who is in you than he who is in the world because we are even greater than those evil spirits because of Christ living in us. So understand here. So no matter how you may look upon it, no matter how many or how much a person is possessed, we have to understand that in Jesus Christ, even that person can be cured or can be healed of a person who has been possessed by a demon by the power of God. So we can look today very briefly at Mark chapter 5, at this, at this demon or at this person who is going to be free by the power of Jesus Christ from Mark chapter 5. Now, if you notice in Mark chapter 5, verses 2 to 5, notice the man, the person himself who has been demon possessed. When Jesus got on the boat, a man with the evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. Now this man, he lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. So you see the condition of this man. This man, now understand, first of all, 
This man is a human being. He's a human being. He is a man. But then he's being possessed by an evil spirit. This evil spirit that's in him is a very strong evil spirit. A very controlling spirit that lives in him. And now he's no longer living in the house that he used to live in, but now he's living in the tombs, or what we call today, <coughs> cemeteries. Living in a cemetery. I don't know about you, but that's not a very good place to live. Many people don't even like to go into a cemetery during the day, less not less much going into a cemetery at nighttime. I, I, we have heard of many stories such as that. <coughs> so here is a man, he's living in a cemetery, he's naked, He's all alone. He is a man who has no friends. He has no wife. He lives among the dead. And he's possessed by this demon. Now when I say possessed, I mean he's controlled by the demon. Totally. 100% control. There's nothing this man can do without the authority of this demon who lives in it. He's controlled by it. Why everything? What he does, how he does, things, everything. Uh, he is a man with an unclean spirit, an evil spirit. And this man, like the unequal spirit, he is an outcast. The evil spirit is an outcast, and so is this man. No one has no one wants to have anything to do with him. Now, that sounds normal, doesn't it? Would you want to have anything to do with an unclean person or a person who is who is in such a state as this? Usually fall away from it. But in spite of his condition, in spite of his lifestyle, Jesus saw him as a man. You notice that when Jesus got out of the boat, the man with the evil spirit came to the tombs to meet him. Came to meet him. And Jesus didn't say, away from me, I don't have nothing to do with you. But instead, we see here, we want to see that Jesus does deal with this person. But he's also going to deal with the evil spirit that is in the person more than he's going to deal with the man, but he's also going to help the man as well. Now, this man, understand, is in a hopeless situation. Hopeless. No one can do anything for him. They tried to help him, but they put chains on him, tried to bind him, and even the chains they put on him, he would break because of the power of the evil spirit. So, we see here, this condition and all that's going on in the situation and understand, God is the only one who can help this person. Jesus, who is God, he comes unto the man, and he, we're going to see, is going to give hope to this man. He's going to give him a new life, a new future. And we, have, we need to understand that not only in the life of this person who is hopeless, who is possessed by the evil spirit, but Jesus came to die for the sinner. He came to die for those who were in hopeless states. And guess what? Every person before they come to the Lord is in a hopeless state. Even though they may say they are not, they are. Because you see, anyone who continues in sin is hopeless. And the reason being is because they're separated from God. And only through Jesus Christ can that hopelessness be brought back into where there is hope for him. And here Jesus comes. This man is not beyond the help of Jesus. And again, neither are any sinner. Again, I reiterate because I've said this over and over again. I don't care what type of sin you may be in today or what type of sin you may have committed. Through Jesus Christ there is the forgiveness of Jesus came to die for the sin. For you, for me, for anyone. No exclusions. Not because of race, not because of nationality, not because of anything else. He came to die for all. He came to help all as well. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees as he was at the house of Matthew, they were getting together. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were bewildered because, he, because they asked the disciples, and he says, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus
Jesus replied, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call righteous, but sinners to repentance. When you go to a doctor, why do you go to a doctor? Because you're hurting. Because your situation is not where it should be. It's unhealthy. So you go to a doctor for some help. Here Jesus says, I'm coming to help the sinner. Why? Because we need help. Our situation is, is that we're not where it should be. It's not where it should be in the presence of the Lord. He says, I've come to help the sinner. I've come to help the sinner. See, this is why Jesus came. He came to die for us on the cross. And that by his blood, we can be healed of it and have a good and right relationship with God because of what Jesus Christ has done. <coughs> An example of that in John chapter 8, as they brought a woman who was committed adultery before him, and they wanted to stone this woman. And they were they really didn't care about the woman. All they wanted to do was trap Jesus. And they figured they had it. But yet, in John chapter 8, verse 10 11, after he asked each one of them, if any of them is without sin, let them cast the first stone. They all left, one by one by one by one. Where Jesus and the woman was left there. And so what does Jesus tell the woman? Jesus straightened up and he asked, Woman, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. She said, Neither do I condemn you. Watch this. But go now and leave your life of sin. You see, the Lord doesn't want us to continue in sin. He wants us to be free from the power of sin. See, because if you continue in sin, then what happens? You become a slave again. And you start doing those things. And we see this happening in our land today. We see this taking place today. People are going right back into sin. And we see it happening. Christ has set us free. He set the woman free. He said, neither I can have you, but leave your life of sin. So you can't continue in sin and have a right relationship with the Lord. It's impossible. God condemns sin. To say, I am a believer and continue in sin is a contradiction. Because he frees me from sin. Why do I want to continue in sin? God, if the Lord made me free, why do I want to continue in it? It is impossible. Now, as I said, that those who are in the Lord cannot continue in sin. It doesn't mean you won't sin. There's a difference now. Continuing sin means I'm doing the same sin over and over and over and over again. And, it means it and I don't care what anybody thinks about it. I'll do what I want to do and I don't care what anybody says. And this is what's going on in our world today. People are going over and sin over and over and over again. And they say, I don't care what anybody says. I don't even care what the Word of God says. Well, if you have that attitude, you're not a believer in the Lord. That's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that when Christ comes to me, I'm going to care about what the Word of God has to say. And if it tells me I should not be doing this, this, and this, and this, then I need to strive not to do those things. I need to do the things that the Lord, who lives in me, wants me to do. Why? Bring glory to Him. It's not that we're better than anybody else. It's to give glory to God and to show other people. God saves. God helps. We have hope. And that hope is found in the Lord. And so Jesus comes to this man. And this man, as he lands on there, this man comes to him, this evil, evil possessed man. He comes to him. And he is the hope that he, that, that he needs in his life. So we look at the second thing concerning took place. We can look at also what it ha what's happened here, and I call it the many, that is the many demons that has possessed this man. We're not talking about just one demon in this man. If we're going to notice, notice in verses 6 through 14, look at the many that has taken possession of this man. Remember now, I've already said, Jesus already cast out seven demons in Mary of Magdalene. So it was many, not just one. Notice verses 6 through 14. 
when he saw Jesus from a distance, and I want you to notice that he is not the man, but the evil spirit, the demon. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Then he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torment me. For Jesus said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Now, remember, Jesus now is talking to this evil spirit. Not to the man personally at this point. It's the evil spirit that says, What do you want to do? What do you want with me? And Jesus asked him, What's your name? Notice, he didn't ask the man, he asked the evil spirit. What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, For well, we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send him, not to send them out of the area. Now a large herd of pigs were feeding on a nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. And he gave them permission, and the evil spirit came out and went into the pigs. Then the herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank in the grave and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and the courtside, and the people went out to see what had happened. Amazing, isn't it? The demons had possessed this man, or not just one or two, they were many. Now, again, in verse 9, we see his name, the demon said, my name is Red Legion, because I am many. Now, according to the Roman uh, legions, uh, usually a legion means about 6,000 men, you know, according to the Roman count. Now, I'm not saying there were 6,000 demons in this man, but there were a lot of demons in this person, because these demons were allowed to go into 2,000 pigs. And I'm not even saying there were 2,000 pigs, 2,000 demons that were, that were in here. But we see that they went in there. I don't know how many demons did possess the man, because it doesn't tell us. But we do know there were a lot of demons. There were a lot of evil spirits in this person. But you notice, these demons did what? They recognized who Jesus was. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. They were trembling at the sight of Jesus. They didn't like it. That Jesus, the Son of God, was there. They recognized who he was. Again, why did they recognize Jesus? Because Jesus was in fact God. And they knew long ago who this Jesus was. They had seen him before. And they knew his power and his might. They knew who he was. Because you see, he was the one who created them. And they had fallen away. From him. And they knew that a time was coming when judgment was going to fall upon them. And this is why he, the demon here asked, Have you come now? He said, he, he, As he asked, he shouted, What do you want with me? He said, Son of Moses, I swear to God, if you won't torment me. You know, he knew that there was, what was going to happen was going to take place because of the power of Jesus. And so here we see that. This Jesus, they knew, was from God. They knew that this Jesus came to destroy that which was evil and the work of the evil one as well. They also knew Jesus was all powerful. No matter how much power they had, they were no match for Jesus. The people in the land, the person they, they also possess, oh, they can deal with that, but not with Jesus. They could not stand up against him. They could not defeat him or anything else. Jesus had the power over them as well as over Satan. Again, what we have to understand and see here that the many demons were indeed subject to Jesus. No evil or evil person or evil angel can stand up to our Lord and our Savior. In the same way, again, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we are even greater than Satan or any evil spirit. Why? Because of what is said in the word of God. Greater who is in you than he who is in the world. You see, we're even greater than that when if Christ truly lives in our hearts and our lives. And this is to give glory and honor to God. But notice also that this demon had to ask permission from 
she said, to even go into the herd gates. Which is like the story when you're reading Job. It says that Satan was going back and forth from heaven to earth. Why? Asking God for permission. Even Satan could only do what God allowed him to do. And here we see the same thing as well. And notice, even the pigs could not endure the evil spirit. These pigs were considered unclean in the Latin days, in the time of Jews. And even the pigs could not take it. What happened? Two thousand pigs were destroyed. But the point is this. Jesus had the authority over even the most evilest and uncleanest spirit that you could ever hear, and even over Satan. He comes to cleanse, to heal, to save any person, anyone, even a demon-possessed person. He comes to help, to restore, to help to God. See, God is able to deliver. He is able. He is there. So look at the miracle that took place. After Jesus gave permission for these demons to go into the herd pigs and to come out of the man, and they go over the cliff, and those who heard it came back and reported to them, and all the people came out. What did the people see? Here is the miracle. When they came to Jesus in verse 15, they saw who? The man. They no longer saw an evil possessed person, they no longer saw an evil spirit. They saw the man who had been, well, had been, no longer, had been possessed by the legions of demons, sitting there, how? Dressed, fully dressed, no longer naked, and in his right mind. See how Jesus restores even those one He restores even today. The restoration that is needed in the life of a person is by the power of God. As they came out, they saw this man who was dressed in his right mind, and yet, seeing this man fully dressed in his right mind, what happened? It says they were afraid. Wow, you would think they would be happy, excited, that this man who was naked and evil possessed was now free, was now cleansed, <clears throat> yet they were afraid. Those who have seen it told the people what had happened to the demon possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged him to go with him. But Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has, how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the palace how much Jesus had done for them. And all the people were amazed. The power of God. Don't underestimate the power of God. We, as believers, have the power of God. And the reason we have it is to bring what? Glory to God. And what did Jesus tell the man? Go and tell everyone. Let them know. What? To see. Show them the power of all. This man, this human being, he was no longer possessed. He no longer had any evil spirits living in him. He was dressed. He looked just like everybody else in him. This man is no longer the person he used to be. But now he was changed. He was changed by the power of God. He believed in the power of Jesus. He wanted to follow Jesus. But Jesus said, no, I have another work for you to do. I want you to go and tell everyone. God has done for you. Tell them how God has mercy and grace. So he told them to go and say this. But we see sadly, the people of that town, all they cared about was what? Their own pigs. All they cared about was to bring them money. Was to help them financially. They didn't care about the man who was tormented day and night. The man who was naked. The man who did not even live in his own home. 
man who lived in the cemeteries. They didn't care about a human being. They cared more about pigs, more about their own financial future, because the selling of the pig would meant finance for them. And so they, the human being here was meant more to them than these pigs. Isn't it sad? Sometimes this is what we have in the world today. We have people who are more concerned about their own financial things or the financials of others rather than the spiritual condition, rather than their own spiritual walk with the Lord and what is really needed. Do you not realize, do we not realize that what we have, we will only have for a short time? That is, possession, finances, money, houses, cars, and everything else. So what is for all eternity? Our spiritual walk with the Lord. Our spiritual future with the Lord. You know, this is why Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 16, what good is it for a man if he gains the whole world and yet offers his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? People who exchange their souls for things that won't last, but for only a short time. And it's sad. But here, this man, this man, was changed. This man went out, and he started telling people. This man was the evidence that Jesus was who he claimed to be. He was indeed God who came in the flesh. That he was all-powerful. That no matter what you may be dealing with, no matter what sin, no matter what may be taking place, that Jesus is even powerful than the, the word sin, the word demon, or Satan as well. That no matter what evil forces are out there, that we can overcome by the power of Jesus Christ. He can help us no matter what we may be going through or no matter what may be taking place in our life. Just as Jesus changed the man from person he was before to what he is now. He changed them from night to day. He changed them from someone who you would look at and talk to. He changed him. And all the glory he gave to God. And the man said, I want to follow you. He said, no, we don't want to tell others. We have a story as well to tell the people how God changed us. Tell this to people everywhere. But today, Maybe God is speaking to you and telling you, come. No matter how many sins you've done, no matter what sin you may be even in now, come. Come. I died for you on the cross. I can change even the hardest of hearts. And it can be done by the power of God. All you do is put your trust in Him. You may not even completely understand it all. And He's not asking you to understand it all. He just says, come as you are. God is speaking to you. You come. Come and allow God, allow Jesus to change your heart and your life. To let you be free once and for all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for your words and for what you have revealed. Lord Jesus, if there's anyone here this morning whom you have spoken to, whose heart you have been you, you, you would say, come unto me just as you are. I pray, Lord, by your power, by your grace and for your glory, you will come. You will come and repent of your sin and look to you for cleansing and for free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Turn to hymn number 319. 319, as we sing all four stages of Jesus calls you now. He's calling you. You come to be saved. 319. Mm -hmm.
God proclaim the message in the words. Let them know that no matter what, there is hope. And that hope is found in Jesus and what he has done. We invite you to come back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock back in the kitchen for Bible study and prayer. If not, Sunday school next week, 9.15, worship service at 10.30. Come and worship today. I'll have the um, Thanksgiving banquet list on the for you in the back, so if you'd like to look at it and want to sign for something, you can. We'll be back there, and of course, on Sunday, you Sunday school, we'll be back in the kitchen area, and then we'll just put it back in the foyer on the worship time as well. We'll keep these things in mind. Have a good and blessed day today in the Lord. Do be in prayer again for the many people, especially for Miss Virginia. Again, she's at Swan Memorial Hospital. Pray for her as well as the family, and pray for others as well that are having health problems and health issues their lives as well. Al, we just been closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, again, we come before you, thanking you for all that you've done for us, and raise them again, Father, these in prayer, these that Father are sick. Pray, Father, that you'll be with them and put your healing hands, Father. Pray, Lord, that you will be with us as we leave town, we go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship together again. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. Feel free to call, but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.